The images you're seeing here are not from a different planet, although one could argue they very well may be giving us a glimpse into the future. Thanks to this man, that's Michael Reynolds, the mastermind behind the Earthship. And if you're a fan of off-grid living, you don't want to miss this story. Reynolds first gained notoriety in the 1970s when he built an entire house out of beer cans. But that was just the beginning. Here in the high desert of New Mexico, just west of the historic town of Taos, in the southern Rocky Mountains San Greta Cristo range, Reynolds and his team are pioneering what some have called the home of the future. Is the Earthship vessel the most sustainable form of housing? What is it made of? And how are these otherworldly structures built? And what is it like to live in an Earthship? Join us for an in-depth interview with Mr. Reynolds where he explains the many stages of Earthship construction and shows us how to turn garbage into gold. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on new videos. Decades ago, I went to a psychic and she said, you turn, uh, you turn the dross into gold. You turn the garbage into gold. You're, you're an alchemist. And she had no idea what I was doing. And I was building a house out of aluminum cans right then. On the news that uh, Walter Cronkite was saying, uh, you know, we're clear cutting timber in the Northwest. We're gonna have an environmental and oxygen problem in the future. In the very same broadcast, did a piece on the old steel beer cans being thrown all over the streets and highways and Yosemite National Park and everywhere. What are we going to do about this garbage problem? So in my little logical mind beginning, I said, uh, well, we want trees, so why build houses out of something that we want? We don't want cans, so why don't we build houses out of cans? You know, just that oversimplified, stupid logic. Is Ron there? Hmm? Ron? Ron just, Ron just left. He did. Well, see, I, I stopped him. The, uh, the college thing, I, my dad was a milkman, so he didn't have money to put me through school. He gave me $300 my freshman year. <laughs> and, you know, so I had to, like, I played music and wrote term papers and did drawings for rich girls and all kinds of stuff to make my way through college. But the college that I went to, University of Cincinnati, um, they had a co-op, they probably still do, had a co-op program where you, after your freshman year, you go to school three months and then you work and they help place you in architect's offices for three months where you can make money for your next school section and you can pay your way through school that way. That's what I did. And so I was for, see it's a six year program, so for five years I was placed in architects offices around the world. I mean, in, in London and in San Francisco and everywhere. And what I learned, I, I learned enough in that five years to know that in the general sense of architecture, the way it was and almost still is on this planet, I didn't want anything to do with it. Yeah, a lot of people can afford a, a, a Cadillac or a BMW or whatever. But most people get Chevys and Fords and Toyotas or whatever because they're, they're priced right. These houses have got to work that way too. They can't be all just for the wealthy people. They have to be obtainable by the everyday person. And this building will do that. Well, this is how a building starts. Uh, you can see over here on the left are our stacks of tires. We stack our tires as per the diameter, we put the larger tires on the bottom and pyramid up as we go on the tire wall. So we have to organize our tires. We get them delivered by a tire store who otherwise would have to pay a dollar and a half a tire to offload them at the dump. Uh, interesting point is every one of our building sites has to be registered in New Mexico as a, as a uh, waste management site, as a dump site. Uh, which is a bunch of paperwork because we're storing garbage. All they have to do is, you know, you have to change the terminology. These are not, this is not garbage. These are building materials that are first used as wheels for cars and then they're used as building materials. You change the 
terminology and all of a sudden it's not garbage and all of a sudden you don't need all this permitting to store garbage. And you, you're just going on this one. We do have um, a certain amount of lumber for the roof structure and uh, the white insulation that you see is um, part of the, what we call the thermal wrap. It wraps the tire wall so that it becomes like a thermos bottle. The, 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 the insulation wrap goes around the mass, keeps it warm, and the warm mass keeps the people inside warm. Then the building is buried as it goes up. <clears throat> Here are our tire walls going up. We pack them out first with cement and cans, and then we switch to mud. There's three, four, six, we're on the seventh course here, and there's gonna be 10 courses. Then we pour these little footings on top that uh, then we set the window boxes on and hold the rafters that go across. This would be, this is gonna be a duplex studio apartment, two studio apartments, so this will be kitchen, living, dining, kitchen, dining, living, and a, and a bed as well. It's a studio apartment. And it'll have a greenhouse out here that is kind of part of the whole room. And then it'll have one of those uh, metal roofs with no penetrations. All of the systems will be in here, in the systems room, and then this will be a replica of this room, kitchen, living, dining, a duplex apartment. And um, there's the cistern going up. And this room is where the water module, the WOM, water organizing module, and the power module will be in this building. This is the utility package for this building that um, uh, provides the utilities for two buildings. Now that is another way that we're making this building more economical is making the systems package serve two buildings, two units rather than one. Therefore, we're cutting the cost uh, further. So what I have found myself doing compounding over the years is understanding trying to understand the phenomena of this planet, like the sun, like the wind, like gravity, like thermal dynamics, uh, you know, like biology. Understanding these things that men don't have anything to do with. <clears throat> now, um, can I leave a message for him? Uh, yes, we would be ready for him uh, even today if he can come, but tomorrow for sure. Okay, this is, um, this is kind of a building that's maybe... 70%, 65% done, and uh, it just takes you a little further than what we have just seen on the one that's under construction. So we, uh, we mix actual adobe mud with sand and straw, and we put it in between, we pack it in between the tires in the voids, and then we keep packing until we're actually plastering. So we just fill the walls with mud. Uh, around the tires and it turns into plaster. This tire wall shows the tire wall before it's plastered, but see we fill it out flush and plaster it and then we put all the solar panels there. And uh, there you can see the cans and bottles as infill and the glass across the front. And a good thing to see on this one again would be the roof situation where we have just a, a roof that has no penetrations in it See, there's a good roof right there. That is water catchment. A roof with no penetrations. Just a piece of metal to catch water and take it to a gutter. Now we can walk around here and see a, a homemade cistern. See, this is our... We make the cisterns out of tires and we plaster the insides of them. And they, um, they, the water channels right into them from the roof. This is our water reservoir, and it delivers the water into the pump panel inside with a pressure tank to give you pressurized water. So this is, you know, a little more than halfway through, and we have just been to the one that is just getting out of the ground, and then we will be going to a finished one. came up with the name Earthship because house has, we didn't want to use the word house. We want it to be a vessel. What if you called an automobile a carriage, you know, 
Um, you, you, it's not a carriage anymore, a horse and buggy or anything. Automobile put us into a whole new realm. So the Earthship is a whole new realm of housing that becomes a, a vessel that sails on the seas of tomorrow. They actually are putting the beer can brick that I invented and patented to make the first beer can house, and I made a few other houses with them, has been on display in the Louvre, uh, has been on display, uh, had pictures of it in the Louvre, has been on display in um, architectural museums uh, in Prague and, and uh, in uh, Montreal and so on. Uh, they've done stories on this house, and now I hear it's gonna be in MoMA in New York City in 2024. In other words, this one statement of actually building a legitimate home out of what we call garbage still appears to be the most impressive statement of everything I've done, even though now we're standing in front of a building that will absolutely take care of you. Well, that wouldn't have happened without the breakthrough moment of building a house out of beer cans. So I built a house out of beer cans and then kept, you know, in kept being influenced by the news and added bottles and tires and thermal mass and solar heating, solar electricity, and, um, and ended up with, after 55 years of just responding in a logical way to the world around me, we have now have what we call six points. The six points that every building must address to provide for people on this planet, and it has nothing to do with any grid. You encounter the phenomena of the earth with the vessel, with the vessel, with the building. And you address these six points. And one is comfort without fossil fuel. Total living comfort shelter without fossil fuel. Electricity. Water. Containment and treatment of your own sewage on site. Food, which is a huge item these days because it's made for money and it's none of it's any good, and garbage. This interview with Michael Reynolds has been years in the making, and we are grateful for the opportunity. A few years back, we visited four different Earthships at various stages of construction in Crestone, Colorado. The people building the Earthships were all directly or indirectly students of Michael Reynolds and the Earthship Academy. We'll provide a link to the Colorado Earthships tour at the end of this video and in the description below. I think the easiest thing to start with here is, um, is getting a shot of the roof. Uh, the roof has no penetrations. It is nothing but a sheet of metal uh, that catches water and takes it to a gutter, and the gutter takes it to the cisterns that are these big black tubes coming up. Um, the roof drains into the cisterns, and the building, as you can see, is buried all the way around, snuggled into the thermal mass of the earth. And the sun comes in the south side. We're catching every drop of water into cisterns. We're burying the building with thermal mass and bringing heat into it. It's almost creating a bit of a cave, except there's much more light than there is in a cave. The sun is always in the south, in the northern hemisphere. It's always in the north, in the southern hemisphere. So we're orienting the whole building. View or no view, we happen to have a view in this case. We orient the building to the south because the south is where the sun is. It shines on the solar panels. They make electricity and take it into a battery bank inside. It shines through the windows and is trapped in the thermal heat. It's sort of like a thermos bottle. It's trapped inside to heat the building. The solar hot water heater is catching the sun on the south side. It is hooked up with a gas demand backup. The transoms are open for ventilation. And there's one other thing that we uh, will look at uh, is there's tubes coming out the back of the building. And they bring in the outside air and, to, and with convection, it goes out the transoms. So we can look at those tubes from the inside. They bring in the outside air and it escapes through the transoms that gives you natural convection powered ventilation, but it also cools the building down in the summer. Well, look at this. This is February or March, and we're cooling the building down. So we have heat to spare. That gets us more fresh air. And so now let's go in the building 
So this is a solar hot water heater that it doesn't heat water, it heats air that heats the water in the steel tank. And it's just an independent passive unit that takes water right into your system. Now, in terms of, this is a typical room in this Earthship. Now, we have a fireplace in it. It's built into the wall so that the heat is absorbed into the mass of the wall. But it's more for fun. I like fire. It's not to heat the building. It, it, it's only in one room. It's to make your living room have an ambiance. That's all it's for. But this room uh, is mass. Six foot thick walls around it that absorb, ph uh, physics has it that heat goes to the cooler place. So if this room gets warm enough, it goes into the walls because they're cooler. And then at night, when this space gets cooler, the heat leaks out of the walls into the space and keeps people warm. Um, so the, the heating aspect and cooling aspect of these buildings has it that we bring air in through tubes that are right here. And they go out the back, and we will see them. Air goes through the tubes. It's sucked out of the room with natural convection by these transoms, these gravity-operated transoms. They're not electric-operated. They're gravity-operated. They, they run on gravity because gravity never wears out. So this transom pulls shut. Our gravity operates to open. That's as simple as that. Does that ever wear out? You know, that's gravity. That's logical. Heat escapes. Fresh air comes through. This is the HVAC system of this home. And um, that's what makes these things uh, comfortable. Now, every room in this house is that way in terms of the heating, cooling system. There are four tubes out back. There's four rooms to the house. Um, and four, uh, they, we have three transoms actually. In every building, we not only recycle, you know, use cans, bottles, tires, cardboard, metal, uh, but like the ceiling of this room. This was an old wood slab fence that somebody was just going to tear down and burn. We harvested it and made the herringbone ceiling out of it. Uh, that thinking goes through every building. Every building has repurposed materials that keep us from buying new materials. Now we will go outside and around to the north side of the building and see how the tubes punch through the north side to give you the ventilation. But even here you can look back at the steps. The risers of the steps are Jägermeister bottles. <laughs> now we're going to go around to the back of this house and look at the tubes, but look at these houses over here. See these other earthships here? Look at those four holes in the back of each earthship over here. Those are the tubes coming through the burial. They are the tubes that suck in. So as the air goes through the tubes, it loses its heat to the earth and comes in the room in those little doors as cool air. Now in the winter, these tubes are closed. But in the summer, we open them. Right now we have a pillow in here to keep the winter cold out. But we pull the pillow out and the summer hot air goes into this tube, but it's wrapped in all the earth. It loses its heat to the earth and comes into that living room as cool air. And the cool air is swept on through the room and sucked out with natural convection with those operable gravity operable transoms. Now what we're seeing here is a jungle. Now this is not just a jungle. It's putting out oxygen for breathing, but underneath these planters, they are rubber lined. This is the sewage system. The gray water, we define gray water as everything but the toilet and the kitchen sink. It runs through these rubber lined cells. It circulates all day long with a solar pump through these rubber lined cells with gravel in the bottom. The plants roots go down and oxygenate that water. 
and clean it up. It's shower water, washing machine water, sink water. They clean the water and oxygenate it. Plus, they get kept alive. Now, there are edible plants here. There's tomatoes. There's mint. There's citrus. There's bananas. You know, you can grow a lot of food in these things. This home is a, is a nightly rental for Airbnb, so it's got more decorative plants. But it's, it's literally a jungle that is supported by your gray water. Now, at the end of the line, down at the other end, we suck this water back up and flush the toilet with it. Well, first we use it to take a shower in. Then we use it to water plants that produce food. Then we use it to flush the toilet, all the same water. Then we take it outside and do landscaping with it. So no drop of water ever leaves this building. So you have seen the roof that catches the water. And the water goes into the cisterns that are buried in the back. And then the cisterns bring it into what we call a water organizing module. We'll look at that. But then you go from that into your shower. And the shower, this is the sewage system of the house. This is it. The toilet and the sink go out to a septic, an anaerobic processor, that then puts it into other rubber-lined cells outside that do landscaping. So the sewage system is totally contained, and it uses the water four times. So if you get seven inches of rainfall a year, but you use it four times, that, that increases it to 28 inches, and it makes it so our minimal amount of rain can take care of us. Now you go on in here to a kitchen, and the kitchen is just like any other kitchen. It's got uh, a gas range. We w if I lived here, I wouldn't have a gas range. I'd have an uh, induction range and solar oven. But people like, you know, we try to give them a little bit of what they like. So because of that gas range, this house has got $150 a year utility bill. That's it for this house, $150 per year, and you could do without that. It's got a normal refrigerator and, and sink, hot and cold water. Now, there's one thing to point out here at, the, at all of the plumbing fixtures, and that is that you always have hot and cold, but you also have drinking. We filter the rainwater even more so through a ceramic filter for drinking. So you have hot and cold and drinking, and other than that, you have a normal kitchen. Now, through this screen here, we have uh, a washer-dryer, again, normal washer-dryer, uh, and uh, the dryer is powered by electricity, solar, but it is heated by gas, again, and again, if I lived here, I'd hang clothes on a line. I wouldn't use a dryer, but we have to give people some of the things that they're used to, uh, and uh, like I say, if ever... It, the, the amount of gas we use is probably 90% less than a normal home. So if the entire world reduced their gas usage by 90%, we wouldn't have a problem. So we're willing to play that game. Let's go through the hallway here. But there's an important thing in here is the water module. And it is um, um, these pumps and pipes over here are what we call the WOM, the water organizing module. The cisterns feed it, and it filters and pressurizes the water in that pressure tank. And from it, you get your hot and cold drinking water, uh, hot and cold water and your drinking water. And here is, um, here is a guest bedroom, again, with the rubber-lined planter in it because they go through the whole house. So you're seeing the sewage system in every room. And again, you have your... Pressurized water from what we call the WOM, the water organizing module, hot and cold, and drinking. And that is the, the system of water that comes from the metal roof, that goes into cisterns, that goes through the water organizing module and pressure tank to give you normal pressurized hot water and cold water. And it's filtered and it's clean. Now that drains into the planters that are in front of the building in every room and it's recirced through these rooms all day every day to give you the water that you flush the toilet with. This water that you flush the toilet with came from taking a shower in this shower 
and that shower drains in to the gray water planters, it's reharvested and used to flush the toilet. And again, as in every room, we have the transoms to let air escape for convection. And in this case, the tube is in the utility room and it comes through here and sweeps through the room. Now here is the master bedroom. And again, this is a very, this is a very simple home. It's a very modest home, actually. Uh, we have a walk-around closet back there with the tube that comes in, 15-inch diameter tube, bringing air in, sweeping through a transom. There's always movement of air through this building. Movement of air through the building. Here is the master bath, the toilet that flushes from the planters, and then the toilet water goes outside to the anaerobic processor and to landscaping planters. So we're looking, say, in this room, for instance, at the six point. Well, the sun comes in and heats this room. You can block it in the summer. You can also take these drapes and even block it more. What these drapes are for is on a super cold winter night, look at this, they're double insulated drapes. On a super cold night, you pull these drapes shut and you lock the whole room off from the greenhouse. And that keeps all the heat of you and the walls of the room in the room and makes it so you've trapped even more heat. You only use this in extreme times. And um, the drapes then are, are normally just kept back out of the way. And so the heat comes in from the south, heats the room, is controlled by the drapes, and if you're cooling the room, you're opening the transom and opening the tube in the back and letting it sweep through with natural convection. But if you're heating the room, you close the transom, close the tubes, and let the sun come in and at night close the drapes, and you've got heat control. That is the extent of HVAC. Heating, ventilating, and cooling, all done with convection and solar gain and thermal dynamics. That is all it takes to, no money, no energy, from fossil fuel to make this building comfortable for people. The water system is evident in every room because you're catching water from the metal roof, circulating the sewage through planters. The planters are growing the food and the electricity is from the sun. In every room you got normal electricity where you have lights that are just normal from the electrical system. And, of course, these walls, you can see in every room, they're tire walls. And in every room, you can see some bottle work. So you see the use of garbage to build with. You see the use of water caught from the sky. You see the use of natural phenomenon to heat and cool. You see the use of electricity for powering. And you see the use of sewage to grow food. Every room shows you these six points of sustenance of people achieved by encounter with the natural phenomena of the planet. If any of this rings any bells or is uh, interesting to anybody, which I think it very well could be because it's a secure way for the future, uh, the way to get a hold of us is earthship.com. When you visit earthship.com, you'll find a wealth of information. Let's take a quick look at their website. Under the Visit tab, you'll find information on both guided and self-guided tours. Under Stay, you'll find information about staying in an earthship. There are several Earthships available for daily and weekly rental in a variety of sizes and price points. The Learn tab contains information about the online Earthship Academy and the in-person Earthship Academy. There is the Earthship Field Study Program, where Earthship Academy students participate in an Earthship construction project from the ground up. There is also information on the Independent Study Program and internship opportunities. 
Under the Build tab, there is information on several proven Earthship designs and consultation services. You will also find information on Earthships for sale. If you are interested in reducing the cost of building an Earthship, you may want to consider hosting an Earthship Academy or field study. Under Shop, there are books, construction drawings, and merchandise. Under Donate, you can support Earthship projects in areas of need. There is also a members area and a blog. There are several phone numbers to reach different departments of the Earthship organization. We'll list those phone numbers in the video description below. You can also find them in the footer of Earthship.com. If you're looking for land to build an Earthship on, please visit Landio.com. Click on the Available tab and there you will find all of our available properties across the United States. And if you have a property that you're looking to sell, click the Sell Property button. It takes a lot of time, energy, and resources to create this style of informative video. Please help us reach more people with a positive, uplifting message by giving this video a thumbs up, leaving a positive comment below, and then sharing it with everyone that you know. If this video receives a lot of views, we'll produce more like it on different topics. Stick around for the Colorado Earthship Tour coming up at the end of this video. We sincerely appreciate your time and support. Thank you and God bless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>